So welcome back to the channel everyone. I'm sorry for not uploading for about 8 months, but I'm back. I'm back with a video request, which is one and a half years old. I know many of you are new to the channel, and that's probably because the right opinion sent you here, because I did edit a lot of his videos. Probably this is where the comment came from, because they wanted to know how to edit like me in the Tro style. And the Tro style is actually done in After Effects, and After Effects is a video compositing software, not editing software. So this won't be per se an editing tutorial, as it will be more of a motion graphics tutorial, which is what I do for the Right Opinions channel. If you actually want to learn more about video editing and video compositing, then you can check out these channels, which are way better than me at doing video tutorials, because it is sort of their job. I'm not really a video tutorialist, more a video editor. So if you want to learn more, then just go ahead and subscribe to them. But I will still be doing this tutorial because I've been starring this person for way more than a year. So at least I owe that to them. So we'll be doing our Tro-esque editing in After Effects, which is what most of us use here at the Right Opinion Basement Industries. And also what most motion graphics industries use. Industries? <laughs> And it's also what most motion designers use in their professional work. Actually, I did write the script around a year ago and still haven't gone around to making this video. But not much about these core principles actually changes over the years, so we should be good. Also, if you're using something like HitFilm, most of these will also apply to you. Right, so jumping into the software, you'll probably see something similar to this. On the left, you're gonna see the project tab, where you can import footage, create compositions, organize them all into folders, and change the bit per channel. If you've used editing software before, you should be pretty familiar with this media interface. On the bottom, there's a timeline, which you can use to scroll through your footage, add more clips, duplicate layers, change properties, add keyframes, and all sorts of other things, which you shouldn't stress about too much. This might look a bit scary for you at first, especially for people who haven't edited before at all, or are coming from something really simple like Camtasia. But for me at least, it became way easier when I actually understood what those things did. So I hope it will be way easier for you when you finish this video. On the very top of the screen, you should find the toolbar. If it or any of the other aforementioned windows don't show up, make sure you enable them by going to the window tab, just like in basically any other windows program. You probably won't need half these tools if you're just starting out, but it's good to know about them in case you want to do something more complex in the future. First, there's the cursor tool, which looks like this, and can be activated by clicking on it. It's probably the tool you'll be using or switching from the most. The hand tool is very handy for moving around the preview window, which is where you'll probably do most of your transforming work, like position, rotation, or scale. You can also use the properties, of course, but it's way easier dragging things around. The zoom tool allows you to zoom in and out, in the preview window. It doesn't actually zoom in and out of the shots or of the clips, it doesn't scale the clips up and down, but it can be used for very precise procedures like masking. Both the zoom and hand tool can be replaced by just using the scroll wheel. Rotate the scroll wheel to zoom or click on it to drag around the preview window. Next is the rotate tool, which can rotate layers. Of course this is, again, possible from the properties panel, but it is way easier if you just use a tool for it. If you have a 3D camera and 3D layers in your composition, you can use the camera tool and its main subsidiaries to manipulate position and point of interest of the selected camera. You can select the camera by using the drop down below. Also if you want to keyframe the camera using the camera tool, make sure you pick both position and point of interest because otherwise your shot is going to look a bit off. The anchor point or pivot point tool changes the layer's anchor point or pivot point, which is the point it rotates and scales from. The shape tool makes either shapes or masks depending on whether you have a layer selected or not. The mask tool does quite a lot. You see, After Effects uses paths for way too many things. For example, motion paths, mask paths, velocity paths, and shape paths, which work exactly the same way. It's literally just points connected together by a line or a curve, and they can all be manipulated using the pen tool. It's fairly intuitive, just click and then drag around if you want to make a curve, and if you don't, you just click for the next point. The text tool creates text. You can also create a blank text layer if you don't type in anything. Text in After Effects actually has a lot of properties and a lot of different animation styles you can choose from. So keep that in mind if you want to do more complex stuff. The paint tool is useless. Or well, it's not useless, but unless you want to do those really cool rap videos where they doodle over everything the rapper says, it's probably not that important. I mean, I haven't really actually used it at all. Uh, maybe you can find some use for it. At least it's not CC hair. You really don't know what that could be used for. Ever. The clone stamp and erase tool work pretty much like in Photoshop. If you have used Photoshop, if not, you sh probably shouldn't worry about them too much. And there's the rotor brush tool, which is very inaccurate. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like the select tool in Photoshop, except it's for every 
single frame and it tries to track kind of what you're trying to roto out. But it does work sometimes and it's pretty rush jobs. It can help, especially if the subject isn't moving much. And last, but definitely not least, is the puppet tool, which uses shape dynamics to puppeteer your layers. You can you can see here, see it's it's extending my fingers probably. I'm hoping. Unless I get way too bored and don't do that anymore. But it should be, I don't know, it's a dumb example. It can help, it, it helps, it helps sometimes. If you're really good at it, it can actually have a fairly realistic effect if you don't overdo it. Kinda how it goes with the rotor brush tool too, you just gotta do it in very small doses because otherwise it really falls apart. Now creating a composition. We finally got to actually making a video, more or less. So you just click the new composition button. And there's a lot of very weird properties. Most of these you don't really have to worry about. They're just gonna be set automatically anyway. If you drag footage over the new composition button, then you're all set. It's just gonna copy the video's properties. I'm not gonna go over resolution and frame rate here. By the way, the background color isn't gonna render out. It's just gonna be a placeholder for the alpha channel, which is the transparency in stuff like PNG layers or MOV alpha layers or anything that has a transparent background. Right now we're on to video manipulation. To add more videos simply drag them from the project window to either the timeline or the preview window. If you want to split or cut clips just Control shift d or option I think or command? Is it command shift d? I actually have no idea. To trim a clip you can either drag the end or the beginning or alt left or right bracket. To access the properties just click on the arrow on the left of the layer. If you only want one property, press P for position, S for scale, T for transparency. That's where the T comes from, but it's actually called opacity in After Effects. And R for rotation, M for masks. And MM if you want to see all the mask properties. M is gonna be mask path for some reason. You can also see all keyframe properties using U. And if you want to see all the expression affected properties, you can press U twice. Masks are fairly similar to what you'd find in Illustrator. Illustrator uses the same kind of principle for paths as After Effects does, so it would be very easy for you if you came back from Illustrator. They work by connecting points with either lines or curves, and you change the curvature by dragging on that little handle. Masks tell layer which parts to show and which not to show. If a mask is set to add, then it will only show that part or if there's two masks set to add, they will only show their part of the layer. If a mask is set to subtract, it will show everything but that part of the layer. And there's a lot of other modes which are pretty weird and you won't be using them much, but they're there, you can check out what they do here. Also, they only work that way when they're closed paths. If they're open paths, they're just gonna show up in After Effects. They won't show up on your render, of course. You can, of course, use them for many effects that utilize masks, no matter what type of mode they're in. Masks have a great deal of properties you can play with, like path, feathering, expansion. Again, these are very similar to Photoshop or Illustrator if you've used those. Most, if not all, properties in After Effects are also keyframeable. And speaking of keyframes, keyframes are used to animate properties, whether that's position, rotation, scale, mask path. To add a keyframe, just click on the stopwatch next to the keyframe. Then you can just change the property at another point in time and it's gonna automatically add a keyframe. If you wanna make animations easy in or is out, right click, keyframe interpolation, easy is. If you want more customization and more versatility in your keyframes, you know, like ease them very slowly, then just go to the graph editor which is located on the top left of the timeline. There are two types of graphs, velocity graphs and motion graphs. The X property in both graphs is time because it's on a timeline, the X is always time. And the Y in velocity graphs is speed and the Y in motion graphs is value. There are many, many other tricks to make keyframe customization easier in After Effects, but I won't go over all of them. Mount MoGraph is great for these types of things. Something else you can do in your animations is use expressions. All you gotta do is alt click the stopwatch next to the property, instead of regular clicking it for regular keyframes, and just go wild. Think. I don't know much about it, it's JavaScript basically. But there are a lot of libraries imported there and I don't really know much about JavaScript, I've only done about a couple of programs in it and they haven't really worked that well, so tread lightly. Blending modes. Blending modes kind of dictate how the image stays on top of other layers. They're very similar to how they work in Photoshop, so if you have used Photoshop, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you have black background stock footage, 
add and screen are gonna be your friends. I really don't know much about the others because I haven't used many mirrors that much. Mats work very similarly to masks in that they only show a portion of the layer. Unlike masks though, mats can be any layer of your choosing, as long as it has an alpha channel or a completely black region or a completely white region. There are two types of mats that I know of, the alpha mat and Luma mat, both working about the exact same way, taking apart from one layer and showing only what's beneath that part from the other layer. That's why the above layer is usually hidden, so you can actually see what's under it. They can be used for a myriad of different things, such as, for example, making a white cutout of yourself while you're talking, or making a really wacky title. Alpha mats only use the visible portion of the layer without that transparency, if it has a transparent bit, if it doesn't, it's just gonna show the whole layer. Or luma mats, the luminous mats, only use the white parts of the layer. The inverted mats use the rest of the layer. Solids. Solids are rectangular layers, which can be added by hitting new and solid. They're usually used as placeholders, especially for effects. They can also be stylized and used as background. Your puppet tool is great if you want a quick and easy way to animate still objects. You just have to specify the pivot points or puppet points. Maybe adjust the mesh a bit to fit your needs. Then animate the puppet point's position using keyframes. The mesh will adjust accordingly, giving your image a pretty rubbery feel. The puppet tool isn't too great if you're aiming for realism, but it works fine as a stylistic choice or for really subtle effects. Uh, I'm not getting paid enough for this shit. Wait, where do you think you're going? Obviously, I gotta escape this hellhole. I'm going back to <laughs> Street. Let's see, that's my arm, right? That hasn't stopped me before. <laughs> The effects and presets section is pre-explanatory, you're just gonna find effects and presets. Effects can be very versatile, from stuff like making your face glow more, to hair. To add an effect to a layer, just drag the effect you want to add to that layer, or double click the effect while the layer is active. To change the properties of an effect, you can go to the effect controls window, or you can find them in the layer's properties, just like position, scale, and everything else. Nulls. Nulls are objects that have no actual purpose on their own, as they don't show up in the final render, only in a timeline. But they can be great for stuff like tracking and parenting stuff to them or from them. So when parenting two layers, the layer parent follows the parent when it moves. The parent can move freely without its chair following, but the chair can move as much as it wants without the parent knowing. Anyway, this has many great uses, which I don't want to go into too much, but for example, if you have a very complicated scene and you want to zoom in on the scene, parenting the layers could be really useful. Also, parenting can be really useful when you're trying to track something. Tracking is very, very widely used in After Effects, because when things move on the screen, it's just pixels changing. Things aren't actually moving for the program, so you have to tell it which things to follow and how to follow them. And that's where tracking comes in. To track part of the scene, just head over to the tracking section and click on track motion. Tracking works by comparing pixels from one shot to the next to make one point stick to a moving object in a scene. So the outer box defines where the software looks for the pixel changes and the inner box defines what to look for in said area. To track, just click the track forward button. If you notice the box derailing from the desired path, just manually put it back on its course for a few frames. So obviously this isn't all After Effects has to offer you, there's a lot more things you can do, but these are the basic principles, and if you apply those principles adequately, you're gonna end up with a really interesting result. Also, I know I only uploaded two videos this year, I'm really sorry about that. I am trying to get better with my upload schedule, and I hope I can do more in 2020. But for this decade, this is the last video you'll see of me. Thank Thank you for 225 subscribers, that's really, really lovely. I know most of you just come from James and probably don't really care much about this channel. You probably just subscribed here because I forgot to unsubscribe because I know many unsubscribed, seeing as I haven't posted anything. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate it. If Crux Kel didn't unsubscribe yet, I hope you like this video. I hope it cleared up some stuff for you. And I guess that's it. See you in 2020, and I hope I'll have a more look at the video then. Bye bye. So cheese night. What kind of cheese? Pro probably not Gouda. Cause that motherfucker's not Gouda. See what I did there? Mm. They ain't from the streets like me. They don't know who I've, who I've hurt, who I've ruined. The empires I have toppled with my voice alone. Nobody expects a little guy. No siree. Mm. Meanwhile, some ballerina bitch comes in trying to sidearm me out of my spotlight that I grinded for for years. Sesame Street hasn't been the same since Elmo was part of it. Well, guess what, bitch? I am Sesame Street. I'd like to see you try.
try. Holding down the throne, wearing the crown like I have been for years, Jim Henson has been dead for decades. I deal with some troll living in a trash can half my life. My best friend is a giant bird that's eternally six years old or some shit. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope that, I hope this is usable.